that were coming at her. Um, and that really the best thing that we could do as a subcommittee to support her was to not focus so much on the goals that we had set, but to focus on the sort of more regular things that were coming her way to figure out um, uh, just how best to to get her the the, the tools that she needs. Um, and so, Dr. Pearson Campbell, I'll I'll defer to you as well if you want to weigh in here. But what we had said was that we wanted to come back to you to get your thoughts on uh, whether you would be okay sort of scrapping the goals uh, and really focusing on on just the support of, of an interim role as MASC now, I understand very wisely, uh, um, guided us and advised us to not actually have goals. Um, so I wanted to check in and, and make sure you both were okay with that and get your thought and allow you some opportunity to weigh in. Dr. Pearson Campbell, is there anything you wanna to add to that? I think the priority areas right now, my priority areas is balancing this budget that's coming out. Um, and then also to hiring building principals. Um, I created a press release that I will share with the school committee tomorrow. Um, after um, my goal is that after um, the mayor does her per joint committee, I would like for us as a school committee and as us NACE and administrators to have a, a statement. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to share my press release with all of you for feedback, so that there's a there's a partnership on this budget process that's going to be coming our way in the next few weeks. So those are my 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 heaviest loads right now. So, yeah, Member Miller. Um, I totally agree with this because it seems to me that in an interim year, there are so many things that come up as time goes through the calendar to focus on that are more the most important things, including as I agree completely that the budget is number one right now. And that also because we've had changes in leadership um, that we've got now a new principal of the high school, but as Dr. Pearson Campbell just said, we now are focused on Bridge Street and the middle school. And so I completely agree that she's got her hands full. Um, not to mention the incidents that come up through the year, such as, you know, the recent Holyoke Mall incident and the Memphis, Tennessee incident right beforehand and supporting everybody through that. So I am totally in agreement. Okay, thanks, Member Miller. Member Davis, do you want to weigh in? Um, I, I concur also. Um, my only question is, and I mean, I think I know the answer because Dr. Pearson Campbell, you said that those, you know, you said yourself what the priorities are, but I guess I'm thinking back to all the hard work that you did with those goals and, and, and the fact that there are like tools to be able to, for us and for you to say, how are we doing towards them? And so I'm um, not that it needs to be that many. And it, sh I, I agree, it shouldn't be, it was unreasonable. And yet it just makes me wonder, does it leave you or us feeling like, how do we do the evaluation at the end? Like, do you see what I mean? Cause there, that's like a tool to look back and say, this is what you said you do, how'd you do? And I, I guess what we would say is, well, we did, we had a good, the budget went well or the, the hiring went well, I guess that's, 
Maybe I've I'm been collecting that. evidence all along. So if, although I maybe, you know, the, the might be done, but I've been collecting evidence of how I design, how was the protocol look like? What does the um, questions look like? What is the, I mean, I've been collecting that all along because to me, it's like I'm creating my own book because this okay. is like this is like something that I always will be able to use. It's not okay. something that I that I have thrown away um, because it's something that you always will use. Okay, I'm still, I'm still using it because there's so many balls in the air. But now having okay. policies and protocols, my building administrators can they said they know how to do a budget. Now they know how to do a budget. And, or looking at the school improvement plan, you know, that sometimes through this first time through the school improvement plan. So now they know how to do a school improvement plan. So it's not doing training wheels. It's like now they know how to look at their data because data wasn't part of the process. Previously, when they created a budget, it was more the previous superintendent and the business manager. Now it's like, no, they know how to look at their data. They know how to look at what needs to be um, for the building. They know how to look at the school improvement plan to make suggestions. So one of the things when you see my budget um, document that's gonna be online, in addition to the traditional binder that you have done before, you can see all the different contributions from the building principles that they can advocate for themselves. So I'm still collecting data. It's not like it's going away anywhere. Okay. I just well, didn't want to and, pull that out from under you or whatever. Well, and I'll also add that I, I actually think we're not going to evaluate Dr. Pearson Campbell. I think we're not going to evaluate her in the traditional way that we would uh, super, uh, a full term superintendent who's here for a number of years. Obviously, if she stays, then we'll have the opportunity to do that uh, after we've set new goals. Um, but, but, I do think it's a really important question, Member Davis, of like, how do we still measure progress? And I also think it was a really important exercise that we went through to develop those goals because it allowed us the opportunity to articulate our hopes for the direction of the superintendent's office. And it allowed Dr. Pearson Campbell some time to articulate her hopes for the direction of the work of the office. So I think it's, it's not wasted that we did it. Um, and I do think it's important that throughout the remaining term of the interim role that we're still checking in and getting a sense of what are the current priorities and how can we support and how is it going. Um, the work still is going to be here no matter what if you're interim or whatever the work is still going to be here and you see my emails sometimes 10 o'clock in the morning um because we it's just a crazy world right now trying to support our students and our families and at the same time trying to teach and lead at the same time um but the next few weeks i think most important is going to be about that budget and about how do we reframe it so that people know that we're not just thinking for this year but what does it look like in the next three years because that's really gonna help frame to the community um, that piece. So it's really about, if the work doesn't stop, I still, because I, I, I'm a PowerPoint queen, because um, people always say, because that's how I can explain document for my staff at the same time, because they, they still need to know what, you know, the progression. We still have about four or six months left of the year. So we still have more work, more surprises that are gonna come our way, but we're just trying to build some stability. Dr. Pearson Campbell, is there anything you want this committee to know right now about, you know, we get that the budget's going to be a big conversation, but are there other ways that we can support you either in um, conversations with you, conversations with our colleagues on the school committee, or other, other forms of support that would be helpful to you at this moment? I think your retreat that you all are doing, so that all of you be on one accord, it's like being one happy family is one of the most important things I think all of you can work on because it, whoever the superintendent is, but when you all are one complete unit, that shows the community that you're moving forward. So I, I love how, um, you know, that you all are working together um, to, build, to build a unit. So that's to me is very important because it's just, it, because when you're a unit, then the community is a unit and then we move together. And that's when you see my press release tomorrow 
um, for your feedback, but it's really about how we collaborate all together. So that's it. All right, thank you. Members Davis and Miller, is there anything else that you all want to share or add or ask at this moment? Member Miller, please. Um, the only question I have is because of my own personal concerns about this. I guess what I would want to ask Dr. Pearson Campbell is whether you have ever have felt along this way, whether there have been supervisory issues that you have felt that you needed to address with your upper, your management team, your alt team. Um, I think I, I the conversations that I've had with certain individuals that I, I, I don't want to speak online because it's taped, but um, but also to what things I would do differently. I think in my mind, I'm always thinking about what would I do differently? I mean, because yeah, I'm on I, tape, I'm just, you know, it's just like, you don't want to, this is like one of the things you want to don't, of course, you know. Yeah, I do think that to your question, Member Miller, I think it, it remains a real hope that, our, our administrative leaders will get the support they need to grow and develop. I, uh, it's almost February. I have yet to get a message home from my second grade teacher about what's happening curricularly in those classrooms. So, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to happen still as we're thinking about leadership in our schools and how that translates to leadership from teachers and how that translates to, to student and, and family experiences. And I think. Um, what I'm learning is in an interim year, it may not be the time to do radical changes, but maybe, you know, we could help. So well, maybe, yeah, maybe is that, I wasn't thinking radical changes as much as if there's anything we can do to support Dr. Pearson Campbell as she has to supervise her administrators, her staff if there's anything that we can do to support you, but also in terms of communication loop, I would want us as the school committee just to be aware if there are issues that you have to deal with. I, th I think right now, right now I'm building a team and right now we're going through a budget season where or deciding do they want to stay in the district or not stay in the district. And I think that's where the key thing is about having a budget that builds stability for the next few years. And I think, and right now people are making decisions, do they stay in the district or they move on? And that's that's just uh, real world one-on-one. Um, and so one of the things I have done is to work with my team to build their skill sets up because they said, well, I've never done a budget before because previously the previous superintendent and a business manager maybe took the information, but they weren't part of the process. So my first process when I created the budget protocol, they had to identify all their staffing. They had to identify what the needs of their building. They also had to identify if we had to reduce what priorities would you choose and how would you communicate that? They also had to look at what is their data? How does your data support reading, literacy, communication plans, all the various things? So those basic things that we, that weren't done before are now part of their conversation. Even with having a common um, school improvement plan, that school improvement plan was different from them before. Um, before, so now they know how to look at MCAS analysis. They know how to look at their aims with data. They know how to make decisions based on their school to go forward. So it's, and they also share, like, they, you know, they have real conversations with me about how can I support them. And, and I, when they call me, I try to walk them through the process. And sometimes it could be legal. It sometimes could be a 51A. Sometimes, it, which is, means like a student is in harm's way. Please make sure you contact the Department of Ed, uh, 
school family services, make sure that is documented, make sure that the family has social worker, you know, those pieces to go that hand in hand. So it's like building a team while you're, while you're flying the plane. But one thing I can say that we have, one thing about Northampton, you have to be proud of the staff that sometimes take over, not just their job, but somebody else's job because we're short staffed some days. So I, I just want to commend my staff too. But, Thank yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts from folks? I guess I would just want to reiterate that I, I, or I don't know if I said this before, I was thinking it, that I think that the, the monthly or however long you, however often you are communicating, um, the, um, member Levy and, and Dr. Pearson Campbell, I think that that's great and really critical that it's regular since we're not meeting quite as often. Um, and then you can share that information with us. Because then, then that communication piece is just so important. And my door is always open or Zoom is always open, you know, email Michelle. Michelle knows my schedule and I can do a Zoom with you, you know. So, you know, if you might not come into the office, but I, I do do Zoom with people because I understand that people can't leave their office, but they can do a Zoom. So I always say my door, is a, door slash computer is always open. You just have to just connect with Michelle and then I can meet with you. I mean, I, to me, I think that's more important. Yeah, and I will say that one thing that I haven't yet figured out with open meeting law is how to communicate with the two of you what Dr. Pearson Campbell and I have been talking about. That's one of the reasons why I did want our committee to be able to meet a little more frequently. Um, I don't know, Annie, if I can share my notes with you and then you can share with the two of them. Yeah, that's the way that um, the subcommittee chairs have done it in the past to share it with um, me and then I can share it with both of them. Okay, and great, then thank also, you. You're welcome. Also, um, so this, it's. I just wanna make sure as I finalize our yearly calendar of meetings that this school committee is gonna meet on the first Monday of every month, uh, every other month, sorry. So it will, be, it will be March. Is that still what everybody's okay with? And then that will give you an opportunity to have the conversation as well. Yeah, thank you. So okay. I, I, I do think that works for me. And, and if we find that because of whatever's happening with the, either the hiring process or what's going on that with the budget that maybe we don't need to meet as a subcommittee, we can also, we can also always cancel meetings. Okay. easier to cancel than to add to the calendar. Okay, I'll, I'll, that, that can be your call. And, and I just wanna say, Margaret, is seven the best time for you? on a Monday? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, typically on a Monday, I finish at six. So as as long as it's at least 6.30, that's... Okay. It Tonight's unusual because I had to move things because of the meeting tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. So okay. we'll keep it at 630. And Dina, if you decide, you know, we don't have to have it that month, we'll just, we'll just not have it that month. <laughs> okay. We'll keep Great. it scheduled. Okay. Perfect. Can Thank I you. Just, can I just confirm, Annie, did you just say that the first Monday of the month? Yep. So first Monday, other every words, other month. So we'll skip every that. other month. Right. So it'll be March 6th will be the next one. Okay, and what time are we agreeing on? 6.30? That work, 6.30? Yeah, everybody, Aileen, everybody's good? Uh, uh, Dina's nodding her head? Great. And then it will be, oh, uh, it'll be May 1st, actually, it's the first Monday, May Day. So, okay, good. We'll just keep an eye on it. And anything you want to send me for notes, Dina, I'll just send out to Margaret and Aileen and sounds like a good plan. All right, thank you. I wonder if anyone wants to make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. I'll second. Member Davis? Uh, yes. Member Miller? 
Yes. And Member Levy. Yes. Yeah. 